Hello, and welcome back to another video of Calc Nerd. So today's video is going to be on a program that is made by Jay Walker over on TI Basic Developer. So thank you a lot to him uh, for making this program. It's a really fun maze uh, program. It uses the Sidewinder, Sidewinder excuse me, generation algorithm, which uh, basically carves a path for you uh, to make your way through the maze. It's a really fun game. I hope you do enjoy. And remember, if you're not subscribed, I hope you do subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. So thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to program alpha M for maze. It's going to say maze by Joe, who is the maker of this program. So new, load, or quit. Um, so you can load a maze. I already have one, but I'm going to generate it so you can guys uh, can see that and what it does. So here we go. Okay, so now that the maze is done generating, I know it's going to be extremely hard to see me making actual progress through this, but I am the uh, dot in the upper corner right there. So I'm gonna move a couple just so you can kind of see, see how that dot has moved. So yeah, that is the pixel that you use. So as you can see, it's a really neat program. It generates a very complex maze, and this is obviously not maximum complexity. And yes, you can uh, change that. What I have right now is so every time it generates, it looks like a fresh new maze. Um, it does completely generate on its own a completely original maze. It's very highly unlikely that you're going to get duplicates, but the structure is going to be similar. Um, so you can check out that TI Basic Developer uh, form if you'd like to. It's a really neat thing, and he explains some of the code, and I will try to do some of my explanations too. Um, so basically, it has one variable in it where you can set the maze so it can have like 50% vertical passages and 50% horizontal passages, which is what he originally had. Like I said, I changed that so it uh, generates it differently every time, which I then find a new maze. So for example, let's say I hit a wall. It says you lose and you don't have a score because you lost, okay? So it's like, oh no, I failed, okay? So I just click enter again and then I can do load and it will just bring up uh, the picture so I can play right again. I don't have to wait for it to generate. Um, so basically I'm just going to do a little time lapse of me trying to make my way through. It might be kind of difficult and I'm probably gonna fail quite a bit. Um, don't worry, I will speed this up because it will probably take me a little while. So, here we go. So that is the basics of the maze game, and yes, if you do win, it says you win, and then it says uh, the moves left. I believe it subtracts it from either a hundred or a thousand. I think it's a thousand. Um, as you can see, I did not actually win there. It was extremely hard to see. The one time I made it pretty far down into the corner, but I ran into a wall, so didn't quite finish it, but I was pretty close. I was getting pretty close. So now I'm going to show you 
how you can program program maze into your own calculator. Uh, again, thank you to Jay Walker for this program. Uh, it's a really fun program. It's a really good pastime, and it is a lot easier if you actually have uh, the calculator like in your hand and actually can see it. Um, the video quality probably is not uh, extremely good, so you can't see like the dot moving around, but when you have your actual calculator, you can see it pretty well. So now we're showing you how you can do program maze. So label three, clear draw, axes off, FN off, and plots off. So uh, clear draw, you're gonna find in the uh, draw menu, uh, which you find by clicking the program button after clicking second, because draw is the yellow function of the program button. So second and program, which gives you draw. And as you can see, clear draw is the first option. Uh, some stuff like axes off, I believe plots off, and I, don't, I think FN off, uh, I found in the catalog just because that was the way that I did it. If you do a second and zoom, which gives you format. As you can see, there's an axis off and a grid off right there as well. So now zero store into X min, 94 store into X max, zero store into Y max, and negative two store into Y min. So uh, the Y min, X max, all that stuff, you're going to find that by clicking the VARES key, going into window, which is uh, the first option. So VARES, then window. And then you'll see X max, X min, Y max, Y min right there. And that's where you find those things if you need them. Okay, so menu, uh, a space right there, then maze by Joe. Uh, new is zero, load is one, and quit is two. Label zero, text at negative one, comma one, comma 65, comma quote, maze. Line 61, comma negative nine, comma 92, comma negative nine. And remember, do not use minus and then nine, use the little uh, negative in parentheses here. Uh, otherwise you will get a error. For x comma one comma 61 comma two, line at x comma negative one comma x comma negative 61. Line at one comma negative x comma 61 comma negative x. End. Line at two comma negative two comma 60 comma negative two comma zero. Point off at 61 comma negative 60. So that'd be uh, the one in the very corner that you have to get to. Rand int one comma 10 store in S and you'll see uh, where I use that later. For Y comma two comma 30, one store in R. For X comma one comma 30, if X is not equal to 30 and Rand int of zero comma S, so that's uh, why I did the one comma 10 store in S. Now, if you were to change this to zero comma one, 50% of the passages would be horizontal and 50% would be vertical. And remember, you can look at that thread if you would like. I actually recommend it. It's uh, pretty interesting. Again, thank you to Jay Walker for this program. Then pixel off at 2y comma 2x plus 1. Else pixel off at 2y minus 1 comma 2 rand in at r comma x. x plus 1 store into r. End, end, end. So there's three ends right there. Store pick zero, label one. Recall pick zero. Two store into X, two store into Y, and E3 store into S. So yes, it is a thousand. Uh, to find that E, which is actually known as the scientific E, use second and comma. That will give you uh, that scientific E. Basically, it's, for example, if you have E1, that's 10. If you have E2, it's 100, so it just adds another zero after it, basically. Okay, so repeat until k is equal to 45, or x is equal to 61, or pixel test at y comma x. Pixel on at y comma x. Repeat, answer. Get key store into k. And pixel off at y comma x. S minus one store into x. x plus k is equal to 26, minus k is equal to 24, store into x. y plus k is equal to 34, minus k is equal to 25, store into y. And text at 15 comma 65 comma quote plus sub lose win and an exclamation point after win uh, comma one plus four multiply by x is equal to 62 comma four and make sure you do have that exclamation point or a space or something like that just something after win 
uh, because it's pulling four characters out, and if it goes here and there's only three, uh, it's going to give you a domain error. So just make sure that you do have something there. Text at 27, comma, 65, comma, quote, score, and a colon. Text at negative 1, comma, 34, comma, 66, comma, x, multiplied by x is equal to 62. Pause, clear draw, z standard, axes on, clear home, go to 3, and label 2. So that is the entire program to make that really cool maze generation algorithm and play it. Uh, so it's a really, really great program. Again, thank you to Jay Walker uh, for this program. So that's really all there is to do this. I hope you do enjoy playing this game. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a comment down below if you enjoyed the video or you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. So as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.